safer6.co.uk. Sponsors of The Haze Out. Yes, we've timed that to the very second. Yes, we that's did indeed. Really good, that. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm a little bit giddy off last night. Still, I am. It's it's been a, it's been a fun day today. Has it? We've got content for tonight. Yes. Does makes me look good. Right. You make me look young. Right. What's not the like? <laughs> <laughs> it's all brilliant. Hello, good evening, and welcome to what's going to be, I hope, a very happy Thursday night. And, and we're back. The team is back. Keith, myself, and Daz, in that order. Larry, Curly, and Mo. And we're here to do the show that can only have one name, and there's only one button to press to do this. So, I'm, I'm hoping so. <coughs> I have me, I'm, I'm just checking to make sure it is the right one. <laughs> Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Here's Hour. Hour. Yes, indeedly, indeed it is. It's the Here's Hour. And tonight, we're going to have a blast from the past. How long have you been using these things now? Um, I thought of this the other day. One year, four months. One year, four months. <laughs> 16 months. Yes. And how long have you been using them, Keith? Over two years. <clears throat> so, you've got memories that Daz won't have. Probably, yes. Memories of e-cigs that Daz won't have. And I was just thinking the other day, because I get asked some daft questions in daft places by very sensible people. You thought I was going to see a daft there, didn't you? I did, yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. There's no such thing as a daft question. There's only stupid answers. As was evidenced at that workshop. Yes. Wasn't it just? But yes. never mind. You weren't there. It was brilliant. Anyway, yes. People keep on asking, what did you start with? You know how did you yes. start and what did you start with mm. yes and then i was sitting looking the other night at the, the people in chat mm. as you do the names and the whole load of names there that i haven't i don't know from going back at donkey's age you know going back to mm. years or so yeah and i'm kind of sitting there thinking i wonder if they've ever heard of a 401 oh yes right have you no i no. heard of a 90 901. 901, but not a 401. Well, there was a 401. Now, the funny thing about it is, you know, we've been having all the work done. Mm. And there's been bags here, there, and everywhere. Yeah. And the cupboard, under, you've got a cupboard under the stairs. You yeah. must have a cupboard under. Oh, yeah. Everybody's got a cupboard under the stairs uh. where all the. It just get, you know? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. Jill decided we would clear the cupboard out. Right. I'm trying to cut a very long story short here. Anyway. There was a bag came out from the very back of the cupboard. Right. Right. Uh -huh. And you know how ladies are? Sort that. <laughs> you know the phrase? Because it was your My stuff. bag, it yes. Was it was bag. black, so it was mine. <clears throat> right. Sort that. So I opened it up, and at the bottom of the bag, I found two brand new, in the box, 401s. Really? Brand new? Brand new, in the box, 401s. And do you know when I put them in there? No. I put them in there three years ago for the first ever vape fest. Three years ago? Three God. years ago, because I was giving them away. <clears throat> oh God. So I thought to myself, I thought, I'm going to review one. Yes. I'm going to have a look at it, because there'll be people out there who have never seen a 401, and you never have. No. So here's what a 401... Well, I've got one. I know you have. <laughs> Apparently I've got two. Uh, right. Yeah. So I thought I'd video it. 
Get so them I'm, stealth I'm pockets ready, Keith. Stealth pockets. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Now, I will say there'll be some captions will come up on this bit of video because I couldn't find me glasses, and you'll see why. Here it comes. Yes, back in the day, this was the box that you got. Magnetic flap on it, and inside, you would see the charger, two batteries, and various other bits and bobs. Let's empty things out and see what we've got. Two E6, charger, and the various other bits and bobs, and a whole load of bits of paper as well. That, uh, if you like, were proper manuals, sort of. All this kind of stuff. Product receipt, just stuff to send away, really. With the uh, new life, with health, all sorts of strange bits and bobs. Anyway, the e itself comes in basically a battery. Like so, this is a 401 battery and the atomizer <clears throat> and we'll do some closing up stuff on the atomizer as you can see it's what you would call exposed coil this is so far away from what folks would know today um, but the charger again everybody's used to usb this is the delightful thing that you would get and your battery screwed into this big lump of plastic like so and a figure of weight receptacle on the back to plug it into the mains. That was how it worked, all mains charged, none of your USB. This is what we put up with. And then cartridges. And here they have what amounts to cartridges. And you might think, looking at that these are uh, uh, Carbonizers, they're not. This one is tobacco high, so let's take it to bits, pull it out, and show you what was actually involved. And again, I'm going to get up close and do this. But that's it. You'll just be able to see that little white dot. Let's go up close and do how it all comes together. So let's look at it in a little bit more detail. Put bits of paper out of the way. And what you'll be able to see here is a 401 battery. Now this, this thread here is a bit like a 510 thread and the cartridge that fits it is held in this mouthpiece. Let's try and push it out. It's coming. There we go. That is the cartridge that's what holds the juice and as you'll be able to see it is absolutely teeny tiny there's nothing to it that fits inside the, the mouthpiece which is just round and what have you and then the whole thing just slots on top of the atomizer this is the atomizer here exposed coil as you'll be able to see and that's how the juice would get there and that would be the whole thing it's elegant without a doubt it's elegant um, but whether or not it's well we shall see i'll have a drag on it now this has got a purple end on it so i'm going to try and get down close Let's uh, pull the camera up and go face on. So this is it. This is the 401. Um, with the juice that it came with, it's probably not all that good. I may need to drip into it. It's not doing very well. It's not getting any juice at all. So, what we used to do back in the day Drip onto the coil itself. This is why I'm useless at dripping. And I'm going to uh, also clag a couple of drops 
into the mouthpiece. And trust me on this, four drops would be about the most it would take. And it did take a little bit. And then we did this to try and get the juice down into the atomizer itself. With decent juice, the 401 atomizer is actually not a bad atomizer. Lovely flavour. Um, the vapour was down to the juice, it's never going to be very hot. <laughs> it got you by. Those were the good old days. Back to the studio. You could hold, you see, you can hold you it like you that. You can't, you can hold it in your mouth. Mm. Have you ever tried one? Not a, not I, a... I've just, I've just been reading chat going through. I do apologise for the fact that the wall was in focus, the light switch was in focus, the radiator was in focus, and I wasn't. Right. I couldn't, fi I couldn't find my glasses. I, I just couldn't find my glasses. And the lads will tell you, they'll confirm this. When we came in, I panicked. I couldn't find my glasses. Where were they? On the table. There. Yes. Just there. Couldn't find them. Anyway, that's the, now, ah, close you up you can. Need to go close you up you can. And I'll show you for why, because it got mentioned in chat. People in chat were talking about a dipping atomizer. You ever come across a dipping I've atomizer? Heard, I've never come across, I've heard of them, but I've never come across I've them. Well, even heard of them. a dipping atomizer, the bridge, not the coil, the bridge is exposed. Dripping on that, right, right. you get it down the front of your shirt. Mm. Guaranteed. So what you did was you put a bit of juice in a bottle cap and you would dip the bridge into the juice, let the drip drop off, it would suck up what it would need, right? Then you put your, your tip on and um, at that point in time you could use it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There you go, Daz. Have a couple of drags on that. Say what you think. 401. Discreet, mm. isn't it? Black with, uh, it's actually a UV LED on them. You kind of get them. It's, it's, it's a lot sleeker than even the, the ones out of the day. That's right. A lot yeah. sleeker. It's, it's quite ele elegant mm. in, a, in a way. Well, that's the black and the gold and the uh, Well, purple. it is, isn't it? Black and, and the gold and the purple. Yeah, it's, I mean, plenty of flavour, but no throat hit. To, to me, yes, um, but plenty of flavour. But design is very light, very sleek. Um, <clears throat> impossibly, I don't know whether they still do these, but I could still see the attraction if, yes. if that makes sense. Yes, so if I wasn't so could I, if I wasn't using or didn't know anything about them, it would have still probably <clears throat> that would have that would have appealed to me to do that. Yeah, if I wasn't yes. using them. Well, the thing about it is, as I say, I, I've got no idea whether anybody's got any 401 um, atomizers left anywhere. Mm. And I've got two, because I've got two yeah. kits. Um, I must have a look. I, if I can find um, a 510 to 510 mil to mil, mm -hmm. then the 401 fits on a 510. Right. Mail thread. Right. The bit that's on the, the bottom of right. the normal. Yes. Yeah, the <coughs> of and if that's the case, one of these things on a, on a variable wattage dipped could be gorgeous. So I'm going to have a hunt about. I'm just trying to think because I used to get, I mean, when I tried them the very first time was about three years ago and that was a gamuchi. Uh -huh. Now I'm almost sure that it might not be the same, but with the gamuchi was the same kind of concept. So you had the atomizer that you screwed on and you pushed the cartridge onto it mm. so it wasn't like a whole complete but whether it was a i don't think it was i think it was a 901 i think it might have been a 901 not a 401 uh, no the gamuchi the gamuchis would have been a 306 306 be right. 306 if it had an, an exposed bridge to it yes it's 306 306 what have you got in it 
and um, that would be in RY42, 36 milligram, 75-25, so it's not particularly VG heavy, uh, but with a heavier VG. Yeah, yeah I better. mean, yeah. if you say... It's when, really light. It is, isn't it? Really light. Trouble light, is, think... it's the, the size yeah. of the, mm. the, the cartridge in that, yeah. it holds, I wouldn't even dare try going to millilitres, it holds at most four drops of liquid. Which wouldn't take you very... Well, if you were driving, that would be no good. Well, even if I was sitting, it would be no good. Yeah. If yeah. I'm to be honest, I mean, well, four yeah, drops of liquid, right. it's three drags. It'd be like permanently filling a fountain pen, I It would, yeah. yes. It'd be constant. Well, I mean, I used to sit with my little, mm. my little bowl, dipping, dipping, dipping. I don't know but how see, well I'm <clears> I am. You know, I mentioned throated, throated, but it doesn't lack flavour, does it? No. I mean, it, it, it's producing, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's it cracking for flavour. But then the 306 is mm. cracking for flavour. Mm. Yeah. And the, the similarities between the two are very, very close. Yeah. Aye. But you know, when you think I about must it... I look mine out. Well, when you think about it, that's that's where <coughs> myself and Chris <coughs> and a whole load of other people, Mark Jones, loads of us started with the likes of the 401. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying you can't buy it. I'm not 100% certain that within this year you won't be able to buy it because I'm pretty sure that the Nicodex from CN Created, mm. the one that's going to get a marketing authorisation, you're looking at one. Yeah. But when you think about it, that was a significant advance on what was before it. Mm. Mm. Which I can't even, re I, I can picture it, but I can't even remember the name now. 084 was the, the ones right. before that. They were the same size, shape and more or less weight. And you were lucky to get an hour out of a battery. And it's really weird yeah. because it's only three years ago, but in comparison to what we've got now, you could almost class that as vintage. Exactly. Like a vintage cigarette. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it is. Exactly. It, it, it's exactly vintage, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean. But you see, if, if you compare the effectiveness, for want of a better word, of that against the disposable. Mm -hmm. I mean, it 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 it's good. It, it yes. still it still serves a it serves a purpose. A purpose. Mm -hmm. well, I can mm -hmm. blow vape rings with it, as, as yeah. people would just yeah. have seen. Yes. Um, but I mean, it, it, flavor floods out. I'm sure they use that for something else. But it does. The flavor mm. floods out. Throat hit, not so much. Heat, not so much. And length of time, that battery's probably puggered now. Yeah. Yes. It'll not. Yes. It, it wouldn't see me through a show. Yes. It just wouldn't. And when you compare it to what we get now in terms of uh, cartomizers, the likes of your Vision Eagles. Well, and I mm -hmm. suppose the fact that you got two, you would just double up, wouldn't you? That would double the, uh, the smoking time you get out of it mm. by having both on the go at the same time. Yes. Yeah, only problem with it was it takes five times longer to charge the battery than you actually get out of it. Yes. On that charger, it's five yes. hours to charge it <laughs> from flat to full. I'd and and that, then you maybe yeah. get wow, an hour out of it. Hours, that's a long time. It, well, long it wasn't time. a fast charge. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you, the youngsters today <laughs> have got no. We don't know we're born. They don't, don't know, know you're born. born. <laughs> They've got no. When I were a lad, I lived in a shoebox on front lawn <laughs> at Lord Mayor's toilet. But you see, in its time, it was quite sort of innovative, wasn't it? When it you think about it. Well, yeah, it's time. It, as I say, well, th these these actually were a special order. Yeah. I, I I ordered them. I specified them up from China with this um, ultraviolet LED, yeah. and it is ultraviolet. Yeah. It'll, if you've got dandruff, it'll show it up. I mean, you need a dark room, and you've got yeah. to be very close. But it will actually. It is ultraviolet. And then they discovered that <laughs> they weren't allowed to make them and ship them after they'd sent them. But I mean, as you say, when you say it's vintage, and you're talking about two or three years, it's, it's scary in the it way just how shows far it's the come on. Well, Leanna Lawless has just asked, <laughs> "When did DD get this device? 2009." Yeah, was it 2009? 2009. These were around, and that's not right. long at all. It, I mean, it's no, no time at all, is it? Isn't. It? No. Oh, you know, when you consider from that that. In order to get anything decent out of it, you've got to drip it because the cart the cartridge in it won't hold enough juice to keep mm. you going. So you've got to dip it, and then you come up with something like an Evic. Yeah. 
yes. with the Genesis atomizer on it or, or any of that kind of stuff. You look at that and you think, my goodness me. I mean, in even, such even a in short England, space of time. In such a short space of time. It's, 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 it is. It's incredible. It's, it is. It's diriculous. It is. Redonculous, isn't it? It is. But it's interesting because we will, you know, obviously putting the EU and everything to one side for a minute, but let's just imagine... Wish we could. And putting it... Let's just imagine Vaben and Vaben as a whole, where Vaben's going to be in another three years to where we are now. It's, it's, it'll be interesting again. It, it doesn't bear thinking about it where it's going to be. It really. It I mean, doesn't. there's some extremely inventive people. Oh, without a doubt. Without and, a doubt. and the electronics and, and the design and, and, you know. And just to yeah. think what you can get up, get up to if you go to Poundland. Well, that's it, I exactly. Mean, uh, exactly. I, thought, I thought that was brilliant. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. indeed. Um, Actually, time's fleeing. Is, time is absolutely minutes. blistering past. It's 20 past, it's time for the first adverts. The first so we'll go to the first adverts and then Daz has been whirring on for weeks, seeing his coils knackered on his Arga T. Yeah, and, um, and I've got that one to challenge as well. Uh, well, you can have one or the other. <laughs> Make your mind up during right, the adverts. Okay. We're gonna, I'm going to try a live coil, and I promised myself I wouldn't do this, but I'm going to try a live one. We'll see where we can get. So it's, it's kind of challenge Dave time. Lord bless us and save us. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. The Safer6.co.uk sponsors of The Haze Out. We're back in the room here on the Hazel Hill on the 16th of May. Did you know, by the way, I should point this out, tomorrow it'll be four years since I had my last fag. Four years? Four years. Good heavens. Just thought I'd point that out. Did, and you, did you just remember that the day or did you know that was coming out of it? Well, May the 17th is the date that sticks in my head. Yeah. It's actually four years ago on Monday mm. when the first ASIG arrived. Right. And that was his little 084 from New Sig. Yeah. Mm. And dear God, it was crap. In the black cigarette, the, yeah, where you screwed the, the cigarette into the, you, you had the... Come on, Keith, spit it out. Yeah. <laughs> I should have brought it with me. I've still got it. No, no, the, fir the first one I had was the same size <laughs> as a tab. It was the same size right. as a fag. And it was 084, and I got 25 minutes out of the battery. I should look out that first one. The 901 in the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway. Yes. 
Enough of the past, because <coughs> we're old and, and what have you. Are you gonna? You gonna? Um, I'm gonna empty it. You're gonna empty yeah, it. Good I'll lad. Go for the yogurt tea. Good, because I've got no juice on this shirt at the minute. There's no no juice, and we're doing the yogurt tea, are we? We'll do the yogurt tea. Good. I love the way you're taking it up with that syringe. This is a challenge. Do Doctor Darren. Doctor Daz, I'll get the tools out, and let's get into uh, let's get into into closey up mode. This is gonna be good. This is gonna be good. Where are we looking at here? Evil. Thank you very much. No problem. I, oh, do I get the evic as well? <laughs> right, you can have the evic back. Thank you. Don't need it for the minute. Close you up, you can, here we come. And chat, if I get it all wrong, don't blame right. me. So the problem what I have is... I the problem that you have is that wick is disgusting. Well, no, can I just say, though, that the way that I wicked that last time, I did it your way, not uh -huh. the other way. So I never oxidised it. Uh-huh. I, I did it exactly the way that you you showed me. Right. And um, every now and again, it'll either say atomizer not found or this, that, and the other, and um, and then it'll just the image will just up, jump up from two point four to five point two. So I've got to, and I know that we we'll all face this problem, but I just seem it seems to be like every day I'm constantly having to take the top off and push the coil around or push the wick around, just to get it to work again. Uh huh. I like the way you said we all face this problem. I don't. No, you don't, <laughs> Keith. I am rather jealous of you what? right now. <laughs> what? Well, I'm, I'm trying to do this so people can see what I'm doing. By God, you've got this tied well in. Yeah, but it wasn't at first. I, I made sure that the coil was slack so that I could take take the um take the wig out, you know, and move it around and do what you said. But it just went. Can you see the crud on that? That's that's only two weeks, you know. When was the last time you burned the coil off? Um, a while ago, because I couldn't get the wick out. Right. Let's see if we can sort this out, shall we? And and find first off something that's going to fit your hole. Right. Right. So first job is to find something that'll fit your hole, and that's that's a bit narrow. Right. So I need something a bit wider that's going to fill the hole, fill Darren's hole properly, and that that. Screwdriver is exactly the right size. Okey -doke. So that's the size I'm going for. Yes, which I've got a nail which at home which fits perfectly. So the first thing I'm going to do mm -hmm. is wind the coil. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to put the coil on. I'm not even going to think about going to the mesh yet. I'm going to wind the coil first. And I'll wind it, try and wind it on camera. And I'm going to give it five good turns. Yeah. Like so. And then I'm going to snug them down well and tight. Are you watching, Keith? Uh, yes. Because I'm sure this will be fascinating. Right, so that's them. Down yes. and tight. All right? Mm -hmm. So now, put it in. Yep. And you don't need to wind it 43 times around that grub screw. You just want it so that it gets held. Right. And I'm going to need to find me other little screw later. I has found it. And we'll just tighten that grub screw down. Because yes. all I want to do is just make sure that the coil works. Right. So you can keep them that relatively tight. Yes. Because right? I, I don't want too much slack there, but by the same token, I don't want it sitting on the deck either. No. Right? So screw that down. Yeah. Right, that's that done. Now, you had it on the second little hole. I'm going to put it on the top right right and tighten that down and again i just want to tighten enough and i want to leave <coughs> some spare mm -hmm. <coughs> now at that point he said getting wire all over the place because i didn't put it back through its little hole i'm just going to snip that off so that i can get rid of the wire and right. i'll sort the crud out later okay. so what we've got now there that coil is right in the centre of that hole. Yes, well, that's where I had the problem before because every time I'd finish with the coil, the coil was never centre with the hole. It was always slightly off. Right. But I think I know what I've done. I don't think that I've given enough wire, you know, like enough slack. Uh -huh. I think I've tightened it too much against that centre pin. The, the, yes, the, the hard part is, is to make sure that you don't get tightness where you don't want it. You, it. I'm just so worried about chat picking up what I'm saying. 
this is one case where a tight fit is not necessarily good where the tight fist fit is around the shaft of the wick. You don't want too tight a fit around your wick, Keith. Right. Right. I'll remember that. It's it's well well worth remembering. So I'm just gonna stick it onto an EVOD battery. Right. Right, and we'll go back into close you up you can. And then all I'm gonna do is pulse it. Yeah. And you can see there it's starting to glow, yeah. To glow. Mm -hmm. and, and I want all I want it to do is just glow up a little bit. Now, what I might do actually, given that this fits on your EVIC, I'll borrow your EVIC back because yeah. I want to see now what resistance we are with this. Okay. Thank you, please. So screw the EVIC on, try to keep it on camera all the time. It's a lot quicker when you're not trying to demonstrate. Okay, so looking at it quickly, 2.4 ohms. Oh, it's four ohms. It's actually four. four? That's ridiculous for five turns. I can see why. So I'm just going to tighten that down a little touch and here we go again. Right, now we're starting to glow. And you can see that glow. Yes. And as it glows, it builds up a little coating. Yes. No atomizer found, it says now. Yeah, this is, this is what, what I was finding with the... Um... Well, it's definitely connected. Mm. If, if you look, you can see that that coil hasn't, sh it hasn't uh, burned yeah. out or anything, but now it's saying there's no atomizer connected. And I'm wondering if it's the connection at the bottom. I'm wondering the same myself. I shall push it down a bit. That's found it. There we go. So that's a, a nice glow that's happening. All right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. So at this point, now what we need to do is make the wick. Right? Yeah. And all I'm going to do is use some 200 mesh. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to use an awful lot of it. It's just going to be just enough. And I'll use that little screwdriver as a former. I'll cut it over size. Am I off camera? I am I'm off camera again. I do apologise. That's it. That's me wick cut. So all I'm going to do now is just to get it started by rolling it around that little screwdriver. Right, and having done that you can just then roll it tighter and tighter and tighter mm -hmm. until it's going to fit perfectly down your hole in your coil. Yeah. That's all you need to do. So once you've got it kind of halfway there, yes. try it for fit. Yeah. All right, so let's just have a little test. And that slides in straight down the hole. There you go. And you can see it's not yeah. ever so tight. That's what, I, that's what I was trying to get it at right. before. So I haven't done that and haven't got it in. It's nice and dry. Now we start again and you'll see that the coil glows for a certain way. Yeah. But it doesn't go all the way down at first. So yes. what you do need to do is just turn it a little bit. Because what's happening is it's just getting a little bit of short. And you can see where it's coming. Right. And there we go. Look at that. Uh, that glow is even right yeah. the way down. Uh-huh. All right? Yeah. And what the camera doesn't show is there's just a slight gap. But you'll notice no hot spot on that little yeah. top bit of wire. Uh-huh. So now, the testy bit. What shall we use? DY4. It's nice. Little bit of juice on. Like so, and press the bit in. And if there's no glows, there you go. Part of no hotspot. No glows, part of hotspots. That's it. That's how easy it is. Mm -hmm. Having done that, then all you need to do is just trim it off. So that everything's neat. And then the same on your wick, just a little bit higher. Okay, another little drop of juice on, just to be sure. What's chat saying? Parrot flock said, I wish I could do it that well. My wife's been saying that for years. Leanna Laura said, Lola said, pulse on battery. There you oh, go. Oh, Bobo's in chat. Bobo's in chat. Yeah, Bobo, Bobo likes, Bobo likes uh, <coughs> the, fe the, the female chest. 
Really? Give yeah. us your juice then. I'm putting fresh in, our. Yeah. What's this? It's something that I made up today. Oh. You're not like it. Oh, no. Very clear, isn't it? Yeah. It's custard. No, it's not. What is it then? It's had custard in. It's uh, coconut and raspberry. Coconut and raspberry? Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, Well, Serenity that you bought from Raw is coconut and raspberry, so I just made it up myself, and it's to me, it's rather nice. Well, I'll try anything once. There you go. Thank you. Have you got a lid? Did I not give it to you? you might have done. Oh, no, no, I've got it to you. There you go. Thank you very much. What uh, what VG, PG? It's uh, mainly PG. It's only um, 16 mil VG with Nick. No, it's not even 16, it's 12. VG mixed with Nick and the rest is 16 PG, 16 milliliter PG. <laughs> no, it's very nice. <laughs> no, it's, it's honestly, it's gorgeous. <laughs> the, right, to answer the questions, it's 0.2 mil and it's Camphal D that I was using. Mm. 200 mesh and you saw how quick it was. It, it is, it, it is. It was quick. I mean, when I coloured it for the second time, I did it a lot quicker. But how I managed, because that wick was, at first it was loose in there. Uh -huh. But how it got tight around the, the coil, because I was moving it and then it just stopped moving for whatever reason. It's quite nice, that. I uh, thought you... <laughs> do you want me to make you some? Quite, yeah, that, that, that's quite nice. Do you want me to make you a bottle? Uh, 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 I'll make you a 30ml bottle of oh, next week. Oh, very kind. No problem. Um, did, did you not like that? I'm just stunned. Oh. I am completely stunned. You've got no bloody pockets and you're oh, still going to work with other stuff. It is that nice. is nice, that. Now, but is. look, that's, three, that's reading 3.9. It right? doesn't matter. Does it not? You're on, you're on an EVIC. Yeah. You've got it set to wattage. Yeah. It'll sort it out for you. All right, okay. Now, what you've got to remember to do on a regular basis, and I'll go back to close you up you can for this, and try and show you on this AGI, which, by the way, when Daz has got these to go out, get one. They are lush. Right. Now, the thing about it is, you need to be taking your wick out every day. Right. All you've got, you, what you'll find sometimes is that you get crud and it kind of grips. Yes. Just take it out. This one's gone a bit tight, see, because I haven't done this one today yet. I left it for tonight because I knew this would happen. Come out, you swine. Come on, that's it. There you go. You pull your, pull your wick out. Mm -hmm. And what you can then do is clean it off. You can either use your fingernail or whatever, but if, if there's any little lumps and bumps, clean them out and then just nip it down again so that it'll go back in. And then you burn your wick off. And that, you should do that every day. Do it every day. <clears throat> burn the crud off your wick every day. Now, right. what you might find, and it happens with me sometimes, um, is that if you've if you've forgotten one day, you get such a build up of crud, nowhere near as bad as the build up you had mind. <laughs> but you can you can get a build up of crud and you might get a little bit of a burn on. Yeah. But all it takes, I'm gonna go to your closer up you come, I think does. Right. So if I hold it there, mm -hmm. and then you'll see it glows up. Yeah. It right? burns it all it off. to the top and it burns all the crap off it. Alright? And mm -hmm. just do it two or three times. Little blow, and that's it. Once the, the I'm going to say vapor or whatever it is, has yeah. stopped coming off it, mm -hmm. which it more or less has now, then you can put your wick back in. And all you need to do is just check that you've still got the same clearance on mm -hmm. it. I'm not going to do it on camera because it's got juicy. And once that's in, da dum dum dum, take it back to close you up, you can. And there it is, and it will just do the job the way it's meant to. Yeah. Yeah? Now mm -hmm. I've got a little bit of a hottie there. Right? Did you see? I did. I so did all, you've, all you've got to do is exactly what you did when you pulsed it. Just turn it. Until the hot spot Until goes. the hot spot goes. And there we go. 
nearly there. That's it. Sorted. Easy as. Easy as. Just takes a little bit, little bit of patience. Yes. And this place is filling up with vapour. Something chronic, isn't it? Mm. But that takes no time at all. No, it doesn't. And I know where I went wrong. I know now where I went wrong is that I wasn't, <coughs> I didn't give it enough wire. To, um, I, I, I didn't give it enough wire before I cut it. So right. I had a, the, the coil in the centre post that was too tight. And um, I didn't, I should have given it enough slack, basically, to have it centred above the hole and I never... Right. So I'm one step closer. Next time, it'll be a different scenario again. Well, next time, <coughs> bunny lad, bunny you can lad. do it live. All right. So, in fact, if I'm going to... As long as you, it's, you might need an hour, but never mind. No, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to put it to chat. If chat would like to see Daz recoil an easy one, we'll use yeah. an RSST because it's right. the easiest of them to do. Mm -hmm. If Daz, if, if, if chat would like to see Daz rewick and recoil an RSST, we'll see the week after next to give you a chance to practice. Say, oh Lord, I didn't even get a chance. Right. <laughs> That's cracking. Look at all the yeses. Disco Des Wilkinson says, yes! That's what you, what you call a stitch up. You've just been the covenant. I'll just see if Daz is, I'll get in touch with Daz and see if he's got a spare RSST that I can practice on for the next two weeks. <laughs> oh, what a fella. Right, um, we'll take the second lot of advertisements. Blindfolded. <laughs> Blindfolded? Oh, look at this. Bobo Vaz says Daz couldn't coil if my life depended on it. Bobo's very, um, Bobo's still very, very dead. I'm sure you could. Thank you, Keith. Well, that's all right, because the week you. after he's done it, Keith. <laughs> well, I was, you know, I was just thinking that it would need to be like Coronation could, Street, run do, for 50 years. We could do it like, we could do that thing like Saturday morning, kick the house. <clears throat>And we're back in a room that's a bit like a smoky shaft with all this vapour kicking yeah, yeah, there is, yeah. isn't it? See, this is what happens when you get a properly wicked. Uh, yes. 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 Have you um, have you up updated your EVIC yet? No, I knew that the 1.3 was due out, but I didn't know if it was out yet. It's out on the Mac. It's on the Mac? It's out on the Mac. Did you know that? No. Because, I mean, it's vital information for you. It is. The one Very point, important. The 1.3 software is out on the Mac for the EVIC. Good heavens. Absolutely. Absolutely. Would you like to know more about it, Keith? Yes. Well, before we do, I want to play some video in from the SWAF campaign. Right. If that's all right with you. You know, mm -hmm. you were asking earlier on how the EU yeah. thing is going. Yeah. Well, I've been talking and tweeting and emailing quite a lot with a fair number of MPs. But one has shown remarkable ability to listen to her 
Um, MEP. MEP. Yeah. One has shown a remarkable ability to listen to right. constituents and the public. Um, not just one, there's a few. But Andy Sutton, you know Andy Sutton's yeah. doing the Smoke Without Fire campaign. Mm. He's put this up on YouTube. I've got to play it in. It is absolutely, absolutely riveting. Have a watch. My name is Rebecca Taylor. I'm a Liberal Democrat member of the European Parliament uh, for Yorkshire and the Humber. And, and the Liberal Democrats believe that Britain has a future in the European Union. I first heard about electronic cigarettes and um, their users probably about three months ago, just after the tobacco directive, the draft proposal was published. I started to, to receive um, a number of emails from um, people. I wrote a blog um, sort of giving my opinion on how you know electronic cigarettes should be regulated and I received something like 75 comments on there. There was a workshop on e-cigarettes in the Parliament this week. Um, thank you everybody for coming to this workshop. I want to say a couple of things about the workshop because I've seen some of the emails flying around and I've seen some of the um, things on the internet. This workshop was organised by, by myself and the committee because we wanted, we're discussing how to regulate e-cigarettes. The reason that some people were, have been talking about a ban on e-cigarettes is because the, the, the original proposal from the Commission, the, the European Civil Service, proposed that e-cigarettes should go through the medicines regulation if they contained higher than a certain level of nicotine, and most e-cigarettes do contain higher than that level. So what people were saying was it's not actually a ban, but it's a de facto ban. Rebecca Taylor. I'd also understood there was no evidence, I haven't seen any myself, of e-cigarettes being a gateway to tobacco, given that they don't taste like tobacco. Um, I, would, I would heavily question that. Um, at times, I was quite exasperated in the workshop because some of the speakers were making assumptions with, that have absolutely no evidence to back them up. In fact, evidence exists almost to, to disprove what they were saying. Apart from nicotine, both toxic and carcinogenic compon components have been found in e-cigarettes. You know, in Italy, we have three cases of explosion of e-cigarette related to the manufacturing. And clearly, in Italy, they found benz benzene in, uh, in the uh, uh, vapor. Unlike patches, unlike sprays, unlike gums, these products are designed to look like cigarettes. We have things we know that we know, there are things that we know that we don't know, and there are clearly unknown knowns. There was a deadline for MEPs to make suggested changes, i.e. amendments to the Tobacco Directive on Wednesday this week. Um, and the rapporteur, Mrs McAvan, said that uh, over 1,200 um, had been submitted. I think that we are going to end up, I'm confident that we're going to end up with something that is appropriate and that isn't too heavy handed. I think in five years time we'll probably see more people using electronic cigarettes um, than we do now and possibly as a result hopefully less people smoking tobacco. There you go, that's Rebecca Taylor, who has <coughs> listened, and as you can see, where she's at. Now, chat is talking about Dr. Constantinos Farsalinos, who has today said that Linda McCavan has taken the limits out, and, it, it, and yesterday we also said on VT Talk that she's not minded to um, regulate ACIGs as a medicine, but that they still intend to remove flavours. And I'll say what I said again, we've not seen any documentary proof of this. We haven't won anything until such time as it's ratified by the Envy Committee and ratified by the EU Parliament. It's still got to get there. Please don't think we've won, we haven't. We've got to see this officially from the committee before it's, it's set in stone. At the moment it's not. And I'm not trying to pee on anybody's parade. I'm just, how can I put this in simple terms? She might be seeing it, but I don't believe it until I see it in black and white with the official stamp on it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I'm just puzzled by this reference to flavours. What's that got to do with it? Well, there are flavourings in, in e-cigs. Yes. All right. And apparently, 
apparently, the World Health Organization and various other people think that once you get past 18, you not, you don't like chocolate anymore, you don't like raspberry anymore, you don't like custard anymore, that, that these flavors, these good flavors, are only for children. They're there to entice children into, into using e-cigs and then they think they're gonna go on and smoke fags. I mean, there's nothing more ludicrous on the face of this planet. But the fact of the matter is, uh, going back a while, um, you might recall, I don't know if it's before your time, but you might recall Chris and I looked at uh, outfits that came up from um, Flavor Arts UK. Right. And what you got was a, a whole row of bottles. Mm. And you could have a 30 ml bottle that's actually got 25 ml of juice in with mm -hmm. no flavouring. Mm -hmm. And then you could buy little 5 ml vials mm -hmm. to just drop into the bottles yes. that are already right. done with flavours. Mm -hmm. And because they wouldn't be sold as being used for e-cigs, they're just flavourings that can be used with anything. Right. And if, the, if that, that you, so you've got 25 mils of juice and 5 mils of whatever flavour you like, mm -hmm. whether yeah. it be vanilla custard or yeah. coconut and raspberry mm -hmm. or even something with menthol in if you're that daft. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? And just tip it in, give it a shake, mm. Bob's your uncle. It's, it's not the, the be all and end all. Mm. It isn't the be all and end all. But obviously, as soon as we've got anything confirmed yeah. about what's happening with that, we will let you know. As soon as it's confirmed, but I, I really want to say it in black and white before I'll believe it. There is a fight. There is definitely a fight on, and yes, we would definitely like for the flavor things not to occur, and there are, I know there are amendments, there are amendments on the table for flavors not to be affected in any way, shape, or form, and there's some very, very good arguments being made. So we've still got to keep on going, still got to keep talking to MEPs, and I'm going to run out of time if I don't get into this next bit straight away. So I'd better do. Evic, Evic. version 1.3. Let's get into that because chuffed the little blue monkey nuts out to me. And this is happening in real time. Well, hello. It, it, it's a way of being a happy bunny for little David, really. Um, because as I do on a daily basis, I check the Joytech website to see whether the MVR, the My Vapor Record software, for the EVIC had been updated to 1.3 for the Mac. And it has. And I've actually got it sitting on the Mac even as we speak, Mac is in front of me there. As you can see, that there is the Mac. Um, so why don't we go and have a look at the software and see what it does? I haven't played with it at all yet. Let's have a look and see. Right, so here we are on the software. Um, this is what you can see, and I, I, I need to connect the EVIC up. So we shall do that and plug it in into a USB 3.0. USB 3, USB 2, doesn't really make a great deal of difference. Um, plug the lead in as you do. Look around to see what's going on. Hoo hoo, get in. Right, plugged in. Aha ha, last login time, 7th of February. That's how long it is since I did anything, which is interesting. It says charging and uploading, which is all good. So let's connect the EVIC. It's getting data from the eSIG which is all good. Um, can't use it at the moment, so I'll have to use something else. I click on upgrade my eSIG. Upgrade my eSIG. Now what do we do? Charging, uploading, vapor set. It's got a lot of data to get. This may take a while. You might see a little speedy up thing going on. It's also charging, which is even better. I like that. Set of 1.2, this is MVR 1.3. We've connected it. What's it gonna do? I want to upgrade it. Upgrade my eSig. English, there we go. I had to double click. I wanted in English, although as you will be able to see, we can have French, German, Pol Russian and Polish, I think. Right, we'll click OK. To 
Confirm the latest version of yes to upgrade the EVIC, has it? Yes. Backing up data, which is all good. So it's done that. Upgrading the firmware. It is as well. Boink. Disconnect the USB cable to continue upgrading. Right, well, let's do that then. And disconnect it. Here it is. Disconnected. Press buttons. Shows 3.3 volts. It's kind of reset. That's cool. Okay. I shall plug it back in. As ever was. It says charging and uploading, which is dead good. I've clicked OK. Let's go back to where it was. You have upgraded the device successfully. So go to device info. And look, software version 1.3. There it is. Software version 1.3, atomizer 2.1, battery remains 0 milliamps. Well, I don't know so much about that. So let's see what we can do. Go to vapor set and mode. And we're in manual, so that's fine. Switch. I want my VV. Set the voltage. I'm going to set it to 4.0. Modify it. System data, right? No, actually, I don't want VV. I want VW and I'm going to set the wattage at 8 because that's where it usually is. Modify. System right data. OK. Home screen. Let's see what we can change there. Left puff count, right battery. I want date and time and I want the battery on the right. Modify that. That's OK. Alarm set. Don't want, don't want an alarm at all. But you can set to 400 seconds, 1200 seconds by puff. Interesting. I don't want to do any of that. Puff set. Reset puff. Total puff, 25,193. I've been using it a bit, which is quite interesting. Um, that's fine. I'll leave that where it is for the time being. Stealth. Stealth on. Modify. Okay. Uh, let's go into configuration. Battery customize to 22.50 milliamp hours. I want the screen to go off at a minute. System, don't bother. Current is zero. Let's set that to 260 because I don't want that to change. Doink. So that's been written. Alrighty. And we've, we've come out of that. We've come out, it's going to actually take us an overrun. I'll play the whole thing in at another point. Um, but suffice it to say, the 1.3 now allows three different setups in the, uh, the EVIC kind of, you can have profiles, you can have three of them. And I've currently got mine set to a profile RVW1. Let's uh, go to close you up, you can't. You might be able to see it, you might not. If you can, if you can make it out there, it says RVW1. And if I press the button, you'll see that it starts at nine watts and then drops to eight watts after half a second. Uh, right, yeah. So that it preheats me coil a little bit for That's me. Clever, it man. is very clever. Stealth mode, it doesn't come on. There's, there's loads more to find out about it available on both PC and Mac. Go to the Joytech site, you can download it and it's there and you can just update, it's brilliant. And not many puffs since February, 25,636. That seems like a fair few <laughs> to me. Um, but time is running out yes. yet again. It, it's been, as ever, a joy and a pleasure. Time passes quickly. It does, it flies by, doesn't it? It does. It flies by when you're enjoying yourself. So I would just like to say a great big thank you to everybody for joining us. Um, Lovely to, to have you keeping us company while we sit and burble away, as we do, away. and create all sorts of stuff going on here. And I can hear Chris is typing in the background to tell me it's time to uh, get the credits rolling. So one more time, thanks so much for joining us. Don't forget to tune in Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, right the way through the week, every night bar Friday night. Um, and we'll see you next time here on Vapor Trails TV. From the three of us here, bye. 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 Good night.
Sapers Eggs, sponsors of the Haze Hour. 